In the U.S., the most talked about ethanol feedstock is corn grain. But corn grain ethanol yields only slightly more energy than the amount of fossil fuels needed to harvest and distill it. For every unit of petroleum that you put into the production process, you get 1.3 units of fuel ethanol energy out. So it's slightly positive, but it's not as good as it could be. By contrast, the sugarcane ethanol used in Brazil yields eight units of energy for every unit of fossil energy put in. Not only is the feedstock bursting with fermentable sugars, but the rest of the plant is burned cleanly to power the fermenting and distilling. The result is a major reduction in carbon emissions and dirt cheap ethanol for Brazilian drivers. At the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in Golden, Colorado, researchers aim to hit similar levels of efficiency by extracting sugars from the entire plant, which includes the so-called cellulosic biomass. Corn farmers will be happy to know that one of the more promising crops is corn stover. It's the stalks, the husks, the corn cobs, the leaves, every part of the corn plant, uh, aside from the grain, that's not harvested when you harvest the grain. Uh, so oftentimes it's left laying out in the field. There's not a lot of current uses for it. The hard part is converting the tough cellulose fibers into sugars using bioengineered enzymes. But the payoff could be tremendous. With biomass, we're talking ratios on the order of 10 to 1. So for every unit of uh, fossil energy or petroleum that you put into the process, you get 10 units of fuel energy out the back end. The tall prairie grass, known as switchgrass, may prove an even more powerful biofuel crop. Not only can you get more tonnage of biomass out of an acre of land with this type of material, than you can, say, with corn stover. But there are a lot of other benefits as well. It doesn't take nearly the amount of water or fertilizer to make it grow. It's very fast growing. You can harvest it once, maybe even twice in a year, and has a wide geographic range across which it can grow, you know, North Dakota all the way down to Texas, to the southeast. Ooh. 